Welcome back to another episode of Jailbreak Overlander. I'm Richie, and this is Jailbreak. If you've followed this channel for any length of time, you've probably noticed that I love the outdoors. I love videotaping, and I love taking my vehicle off-road to find remote locations like this waterfall. If I had to guess, probably five people in the last year have seen this waterfall I'm showing you right now. Because to get to places like this, you need to really try. I videotape everything. I love nature. I love wildlife. And to get to these places, normally, this is how I have to do it. And I don't mind whatsoever at all. I love it. But this week, we find ourselves in my own backyard. You're going to want to see this because it's a pretty spectacular thing. So sit back, relax, and check this out. So here we are. This is very close to where I grew up. This is the Atlantic Ocean, and more specifically, this is Boston Harbor. And it is the end of May. And the reason I say it's the end of May is because this is the time of year that you'll find these while walking along the water. Looks like a big rock with a bunch of barnacles on it, correct? but it's a little bit more than meets the eye. It's a horseshoe crab. And according to experts, horseshoe crabs are not actually crabs at all. They're much more closely related to spiders and other arachnids than they are to crabs or lobsters. And in the end of May, early June, they come into Boston Harbor to mate. And it's truly spectacular because I remember 40 years ago, walking on this same beach with my grandfather, and he pointed these things out. And I hadn't seen them in the longest time. While taking a walk on the beach at around 8 o'clock at night, I noticed a few. And then I noticed a few more. And it was incredibly amazing. Experts claim these things have been around for hundreds of millions of years and they're nearly identical to their ancient relatives, the things that you would find in fossils. They have a tank-like structure consisting of a front shell called the prosoma, a back shell called the opithosoma, and a spike-like tail called a telson. They have 10 eyes, a pair of compound eyes on the shell, and photoreceptors in other areas, primarily along the tail. Now, even though the tail looks like a weapon, it can't hurt you. It's literally used to turn the crab over if he ends up upside down. That's it. Now, when I was a kid, horseshoe crabs were absolutely everywhere, and much like anything else, there's far less of them. They have enemies, so to speak. Sea turtles, alligators, and sharks eat them. But the biggest thing is the biomedical industry. Because of their unique copper-based blue blood, it contains a substance called limulus ambicite lysate, or LAL. So in the biomedical industry, they take the horseshoe crab and they cut it in half and drain out their incredibly blue blood. 
So, as the years have gone by, there's less and less of them, just like everything else. So when I saw these guys, I had to go home and grab a couple of cameras and come back and videotape it. It's such a rarity to see these things. If you happen to see one of these on a beach, don't pick it up by its tail. Grab it by either side of the shell and bring it back to the water, or just leave it alone. You're looking at several males trying to fertilize this one larger female that's in the middle. And it was crazy because while I was videotaping, it appeared that one of them was trying to chase me off. Again, 10 sets of eyes. He doesn't look too happy. I tried not to disturb them, but I could not pass up the opportunity to videotape them. It brought me back to my childhood and brought back really great memories of walking the beach with my grandfather. Now, since Big Pharma has discovered a use for the horseshoe crab's blood, their numbers have started to be depleted since 1998. So if you find these things interesting, I'll leave links to websites below where you can report sightings or just keep up with what's going on with these things. But again, once Big Pharma or large corporations find out a way to make money off these things, they don't care if they slaughter the entire species. I don't mean to sound so dramatic, but it's a fact. 40 years ago, these things were all over this beach. This time around, there were probably a couple dozen. And it breaks my heart. It just does. I returned to many of the same places year after year only to find less and less wildlife. Corporations move in, they buy up the property, they buy up the land, and they bleed it dry. And they kill off the wildlife in the process. Government regulations allow them to do basically anything that they want. Things that the average human being wouldn't be allowed to do. And it's sad. We were given custodianship over this earth and we have sadly dropped the ball in my opinion there's so many amazing things on this earth that most people will never see like this terrapin for instance small land tortoises that roam all over the midwest it's amazing it's not terrible. I know. yeah hey buddy no matter where you live, what region of the country or the world, if you just go out and look, you'll discover the amazing wildlife that resides in your area, whether you notice it or not. But once you start looking and more specifically pointing a camera, it's amazing what you will see. Great horned owls, large armadillos rooting around in Louisiana, it's just amazing all the different species of animals that were created and are on this earth. They all have their role to play. They all do their job and all of them just want to be left alone. Nice, thank you. It's a hungry little coyote or sick. You should probably get out of the road, dude. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment below and I will return the favor.